Hey everybody, it's Pastor Jeff, back to talk to you this time about our weekly installment from Dr. Moeller's book entitled, The Conviction to Lead. This week, we're going to look at the topic of character. Dr. Moeller points out that character is at the very heart of leadership. He helps us to see in this chapter not only the necessity for strong biblical character, but he also helps us to understand the confusion that is amidst in our culture and our time, really based on a lack of character, or perhaps better stated, based on the confusion that surrounds the issue of character. Let me start by reading you a quote that Dr. Moeller includes from a sociologist named Dr. Hunter at the University of Virginia, speaking to the malaise that surrounds the issue of character. Hunter says the following, we want character, but without yielding conviction. We want strong morality, but without the emotional burden or guilt or shame that it brings. We say that we want virtue, but we want virtue without particular moral justifications that inevitably tend to offend us. We want good without having to name evil. We want decency without the moral authority to insist upon that decency. We want moral community without any limitations on personal freedom. In short, says Hunter, we want what we cannot have on the terms that we want it. Do you see the problem that comes from saying things like, oh, we want character, oh, we want what's right, but then living in a way that defies the very things that we claim? It's one who would say, for example, I want to champion rightness without being held to the standards of righteousness. Well, here again, we're, we're at the heart of character, and Dr. Moeller makes it very clear that leadership, strong biblical Christian leadership, requires the character of Christ, the, the truth and the love of Jesus to be at the very core of that Christian leader. When that's not the case, Dr. Moeller points out that not only will followers lose confidence because they don't see a consistency in the character of their leaders, but ministry and people and, and the things of this world, culture, community, they all fall apart when those that are leading are not leading from a place of Christian character. Now, I was, I was in a place where I was remembering this week a strong and important point that I was taught in the business world, actually in some of my marketing classes. There's a concept called congruence or congruence in the marketing world, and it speaks to the businesses that aim their efforts at trying to first understand those things that the consumer has angst with, and then trying to meet those needs or those frustrations with a product or a service. The thought is that when you can come to a place where a person's stated wants and needs are met with what they perceive to be satisfactory or acceptable means to granting or getting to those needs being fulfilled, that that person will come to a place of emotional congruence. Their wants, their needs, and their actions to fulfill are all now working together. I can't help but think how this ties into the real message and the, the meaning of character. For you see, it's only when what we say that we believe and how we live out our beliefs are congruent, are unified, are consistent, that one, we will walk with the peace that is promised to God's people, but two, as leaders, we'll build the kind of character that develops confidence and community in the church. Dr. Moeller said that the New Testament paints a picture that would show the world where the Christians are and where they are being, not saying and not talking, but being and walking. He said, we will show the world a picture, a painter, a portrait, if you will, of character in community. 
where the world sees Christian character in biblical community, they will have to take notice. For you see, this is the place where the world says, how in the world can you live like that? How can you make those choices? How can you live with those priorities? I can understand, says many, how people talk that way. But how can you actually live it? How can you lay down your life for a brother that you don't even know? How can you walk away from the riches of this world to embrace the privileges of surrendered living in Christ? Here is where Christian character gets its traction. I have said to others, and I believe in my heart of heart, that real character is best measured in the dark. You say, what do you mean by that? True character can only be measured when nobody else is looking, when nobody else can see. You see, the question of real, true, biblical Christian character is, who are you, not only when nobody else can see, but who are you if and when you believe that there are no negative consequences for whatever you choose? The true character rises in the absence of perceived consequence. It's who you are when you think you can get away with it that will reflect the genuine character on the inside. You see, for the biblical Christian, it's not that we don't do certain things out of good character. It's that we want to do the right things, the righteous things, because of our Christ-like character. I ask you, have you felt the sting or the pain of being under the leadership of poor or lacking character? If we're honest, most of us will have to admit two things. Number one, yes, I have felt the sting of being under the leadership that was reflecting poor character. But more honest, we would have to admit that we have been that person. We have been the people who have not lived in high Christian character. Praise God if you can acknowledge that there was a time where not only was that you in a moment, but that was you for all of eternity, unless or until the grace of God came in and grabbed your heart. My prayer is that for those of us that know what it is to have been saved by grace, those of us that have had the miracle of saving grace come to us through the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Messiah, will live on mission as men and women of character, of young men and women of Christian character, that we will be God's leaders in a world that desperately needs to see him lived out. You and I know many people, many of our lost friends and neighbors are sick and tired of hearing the Christians. And they're saying, if, if that's really true, stop barking it at me and start living it in front of me. Those that you and I know and love that don't know Jesus, many of them would accept from the hands and the hearts of our lives an expression of genuine Christian character if they didn't have to hear it wrapped in so much legal Christian speak and they could just see it and feel it through the lives that are lived out loving them. Truth and love, the pillars of Christian character. Here again, another thought for you to take with you as a leader. And remember, if you're a Christian, you are a leader. I pray that we will all continue to grow in our Christ-likeness, in the character that God wants to put in us so that it can be lived out through us. And that much glory will be made of our King as more and more people come to see him through our lives lived out and our loving missionary efforts to bring them to the cross. Until next week, I pray that you will be a Christian leader of character. I thank God for you and pray for you on a regular basis. Amen and amen.